Mr. Fate, I really must You assist the tricked team. me! Well, aren't you going to deny it? Certainly not. I tricked you to protect my fiancé's good name. That's one word for her. I can think of a few others. You better not speak them aloud if you know what's good for you. I don't want your money. I don't want that contract. It's too late for that. And I warn you, if I so much as read her name in anything but the court circular, I shall hound you and ruin you and have you locked up. Is that clear? Doesn't end here, you know. Not for John Bates. Lady Mary might have got away, what do I care? But he won't. You tell him. That's entirely your own affair. Mr Bates, telegram for you. What was that about? His wife's dead. Someone found her early this morning. I said I was coming that evening and I meant to have it out with her. I may have said she was being unreasonable, but so she was. Will it change anything? Well, think about it. Before Vera's death, she had taken all my money and she had wrecked the divorce. Now, as her widower, I inherit everything and we can marry whenever we like. Anna, they're going in. Are you looking for me? John Bates? Yes. You are under arrest on the charge of willful murder. You are not obliged to say anything unless you desire to do so. Whatever you say will be taken down in writing and may be given in evidence against you upon your trial. I understand. No, no! Please, do whatever is required. I love you. And I love you. For richer, for poorer, for better, for worse. Come along, sir. I wanted to explain how it will work. You'll both have received official notification through the post. But why have I been called? What's it to me? I know nothing. Since you're summoned as witness for the prosecution, the police would obviously disagree. When John Bates returned from London on his final visit to Mrs Bates, did you notice anything about his appearance? He had a scratch on his cheek. But he might have got that. And I believe the maid, Anna Smith, asked him how the meeting had gone. Well, she and he were... And how did he answer her? He said it had been worse than she could possibly imagine. And what did he call her? I shouldn't have been listening in the first place. I had no right to be there. But you were listening, Mrs Hughes. So please tell us what he called her when he grew angry. He, he said she was a bitch. Are you all agreed? We are, my lord. The prisoner will stand. Do you find the prisoner to be guilty or not guilty as charged? Guilty, <laughs> my lord. John Bates, you have been found guilty of the charge of willful murder. You will be taken from here to a place of execution where you will be hanged by the neck until you are dead. And may God have mercy upon your soul. No, no, this is wrong. This is, this is terribly, terribly wrong. Take him down. <laughs> Anna! Do sit down, Anna.
You mustn't think that this is the end. For the judge to pronounce the death sentence is a matter of routine. Routine? He means the judge had no choice. If a man is found guilty of murder, he must be sentenced to death. But there are many reasons for it to be commuted. Many reasons. Is being innocent one of them? We have to work to change the sentence to life imprisonment. Life imprisonment? Because it won't demand a retrial or an overthrow of the Crown's case. Once we have that, we can begin to build a challenge to the verdict. Do you understand? Yes, my lady, I do. I still can't believe it. Well, I'm afraid you must. We'll need you to write a letter to the Home Secretary, Mr. Shaw. I'll leave for London at once and put it into his hand myself. He's a liberal, isn't he? Pity. He's a decent man. The flaw in their case is the question of premeditation. Even if Mr. Bates had run to the cellar for the poison and pushed it into her food, we can argue strongly he didn't plan it. He didn't plan it because he didn't do it. And we'll stress the circumstantial nature of the evidence. There may still be elements that come to light. What chance do you think we have? It's not a good chance, Mrs. Bates. But there's still a chance. I don't know how they've kept it out of the papers. I suppose that'll change if it goes ahead. I can't bear to think of it. How will Anna bear it? As the widow of a murderer. She'll have to get used to a degree of notoriety, I'm afraid. And so will we, as the house that shelters her. Then let me put you out of your misery right away, Mr. Carson. By handing in my notice. You don't mean that? Yes, I do. If I stay here, I keep the story alive. If I go away to... Scotland, say, or London, it'll die soon enough. I'll just be one more housemaid lost in the crowd. She has a point. Not one that I accept. I mean it, Mrs Hughes. I want you to thank his lordship for trying to help me. Yes, but what he said... He didn't want to say it. But I won't blame him for not lying. Give him my best wishes for the future. I wish all of them well. I don't want you to hold it against Mrs. Hughes or Miss O'Brien. Do you think I can yeah. ever... And... Even Miss O'Brien. We've not been friends, but she doesn't want me here. Please forgive them. I'm not sorry, you know. Not... I would marry you now, if I wasn't already your wife. I would. God knows I'm not sorry either. Maybe I should be, but... No man can regret loving, as I have loved you. No touching! For God's sake, man, you know where I am bound. How dangerous can this be? One kiss to take with me.